Metro Manila submerged in flood. This seems like not news anymore since this scenario has ever been frequent in the past years. Just days ago, this mega city was once again brought to a standstill. The enhanced southwest monsoon poured heavy rains over the country. Streets have been submerged in waist-deep floods. Classes were suspended. Passengers were stranded for hours, with some forced to walk through flooded streets just to get home. Social media was once again filled with images of submerged vehicles, soaked commuters, and flooded homes. For the residents, they've even resigned to the thought that this is the new normal. This leads us to one question. Why? Experts have provided some surprising reasons that might shock you. But before we dive into this, let's first get to know this mega city better. Metro Manila is the economic and cultural powerhouse of the country. More than 15 million people call this megacity a home. To the west, it's bordered by Manila Bay, while rivers like the Pasig and Marikina weave through its landscape. Most of the country's biggest industries and headquarters operate here. It's not surprising that it contributes about 36% to the total economy. This unequal distribution of opportunities has made the megacity the top destination for those from the provinces seeking jobs. This, in turn, makes the city even more crowded. When it comes to tourism, it might not be able to compete with world-famous destinations like Boracay or Palawan. But, it has something unique to offer. Within the city, you can explore the historic walled district of Intramuros, a reminder of the Spanish colonial era, or walk through Binondo, the world's oldest Chinatown, where Filipino and Chinese influences have blended for centuries. However, nowhere else in the Philippines is the divide between wealth and poverty more striking. Just beside towering luxury condos, informal settlements spread along the city's edges. In these parts of the city, survival is a brutal challenge. Some people get by with nothing more than food that others have thrown away. But poverty isn't the only burden residents face. The city has also been dealing with another long-standing problem. Flooding. If you think that this challenge was just a product of modern times, then you're wrong. It's been a part of the city's reality for over a hundred years. Even in the early 1900s, floods were a common occurrence during the rainy season, especially in low-lying areas such as Quiapo, Santa Cruz, and Tondo. But back then, the floods were usually shallow, often rising only to the ankles or knees. That changed in July 1972, when Manila was hit by one of the worst floods in its history. Heavy rains fell on and off for weeks, eventually submerging nearly 90% of the city. The flooding lasted for nearly six weeks, disrupting daily life across the capital. Nowadays, floods of that scale don't feel rare anymore. We could argue that the main reason would be the geography of this capital itself. The city was built on a low-lying floodplain. This flatness means there's little natural slope to carry rainwater away. Imagine a city trapped in a massive basin, bordered by water on all sides with no clear way out. This is the situation in Metro Manila. To the west lies Manila Bay, and to the east, the even larger Laguna de Bay. Adding to these is the massive river system. The Pasig River cuts right through the heart of the city, linking Laguna de Bay to Manila Bay. But it's not alone. The Marikina River, San Juan River, and dozens of smaller creeks and canals weave through neighborhoods and business districts. These waterways are essential for draining water. However, due to rapid urbanization, these have been polluted or blocked. What used to be open land that could absorb rain has now become a concrete jungle. So when the rain comes, there's nowhere for it to go but sideways. Compounding the problem is the country's geography itself. The Philippines sits within the Pacific Ring of Fire, a volatile region infamous for its unrelenting volcanic activity and severe weather extremes. No other nation faces typhoons as frequently or as intensely. In other words, this region experiences heavy rainfall more frequently than most places. Next is the fast sinking of the land. According to a study, parts of the city sank by as much as 10.6 centimeters per year between 2014 and 2020. That's 24 times faster than the global average rate of sea level rise, 
The growing number of high-rise buildings is being seen as the major contributor to this sinking of the land. Metro Manila is one of those cities with an iconic skyline. Yet behind this image of progress is a steep price. Many of these structures are built on soft or waterlogged ground, which isn't always properly assessed before construction. Some buildings are likely built on unstable soil that can't bear the added weight. Over time, this can lead to gradual sinking. If it's your first time visiting this megacity, the chaos is hard to miss. While some order can be seen in a few upscale business districts, those areas are more the exception than the norm. The city's overall lack of planning only makes flooding worse. Before the Japanese occupation, the Philippines was considered one of the more progressive countries in Asia. During the American period, a detailed plan for Manila was proposed, known as the Burnham Plan. The idea was to make urban areas not just functional, but beautiful and well-organized. But fast forward to today, we know too well that much of this didn't materialize. As the city expanded over the years, growth happened without a clear, cohesive plan. With the population growing faster than housing could be built, many were forced to settle wherever they could find space. Poor urban planning often goes hand in hand with lack of proper infrastructure necessary to combat flooding. To be fair, the government had been investing in necessary infrastructures since the 1980s. It built the Mangahan Floodway. This was designed to divert excess water from the Marikina River into Laguna Lake during heavy rains. The only problem is the second part of the plan wasn't implemented. Because of this, the megacity's flood control systems fall short of doing what they were originally designed to do. Of course, flooding isn't a problem unique to the Philippines. Other disaster-prone countries like Japan face similar challenges. The difference is that they've shown that with political will, flooding can be managed. In Tokyo, underground space has become a key part of their flood control strategy. One of their main defenses is a network of massive underground water tanks designed to catch and store rainwater during storms. The city also has an extensive system of dams, reservoirs, and levees. Some might argue that comparing the Philippines to a country like Japan isn't fair. It's like comparing an apple to an orange given the difference in development and resources. But the truth is, the Philippines has also invested a significant amount in flood control. Around 20 billion US dollars, or roughly 1 trillion pesos, has been allocated for infrastructure aimed at reducing flood risks. President Marcos Jr. has also pointed to more than 5,500 flood-related projects as part of the government's response. The real question now is, where did all that funds go? A straightforward answer is corruption. A local executive known to fight corruption, the Baguio City Mayor, has mentioned that corruption in public infrastructure projects can reach up to 70%. That's a huge chunk of the budget gone before any real work even begins. Because of this, engineers are often left with tight budgets and not enough materials to work with. Naturally, the result is that these projects don't perform the way they're supposed to. So, how can the megacity actually deal with its flooding problem? Renowned Filipino urban planner Felino Palafox has proposed a practical idea. It's adopting the smart or stormwater management and road tunnel system, which are already being utilized in countries like Malaysia. The plan is to build a multi-purpose tunnel connecting Laguna Lake to Manila Bay. The top two levels would serve as roads to help ease traffic in Metro Manila, while the bottom level would act as a spillway to drain excess floodwater from the lake during heavy rains. Palafox made it clear that a megastructure like this isn't a short-term solution. It requires a massive investment and might take a decade before being fully constructed. Another practical step that doesn't involve major construction is the regular deepening of rivers, esteros, and especially Laguna Lake, to improve drainage and reduce the risk of spillover. But there's one crucial element often overlooked in this entire defense system. The residents themselves. No matter how advanced or well-designed a flood defense system may be, it becomes useless if the local community doesn't cooperate. If people continue to throw their garbage into canals, rivers, or along the streets, this waste ends up clogging drainage systems and blocking the natural flow of water. As the old saying goes, any harm done to nature will eventually find its way back to you.
This is how catastrophic a mega dam collapse could be. Mega dams. Some of humanity's biggest engineering marvels. Massive, powerful, and built to reshape nature itself. But when they fall, they become like humanity's biggest curse. It wipes out everything in its path. What was meant to protect us can become the very thing that will endanger our lives. This is exactly the warning that experts have warned about China's Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest capacity hydroelectric station. Experts warn that if this massive dam were to collapse, the result would be catastrophic on a scale the world has rarely seen. We've been watching as massive floods, supposed to happen only once every 50 years, sweep across China. And this is exactly what experts have been dreading. These extreme weather events are putting the Three Gorges Dam to the test, pushing it closer and closer to its limits. Experts are fearful that the massive structure may not withstand the onslaught. What would exactly happen if this massive dam would collapse? Before we dive into this intriguing question, let's first jump back in time when it was constructed. For thousands of years, China has battled one of its greatest and most unforgiving enemies, its own rivers. These waterways, powerful and unpredictable, have shaped not just the land, but the destiny of the people who call it home. Floods came like curses, swallowing villages, drowning fields, and wiping away entire generations. And so, for centuries, Chinese rulers sought to do the impossible, tame the rivers. Over time, they carved a vast, complex network of canals, dikes, and dams across the landscape. But nothing would match the ambition, or the consequences, of what came next. This is where the Three Gorges Dam would come in. For decades it was just a bold idea. Too massive, too ambitious to bring to life. But in 1994, that dream turned into reality. China broke ground on what would become the largest hydro-engineering project in its history. A towering wall of concrete and steel, stretching over 2,300 meters wide, and rising 185 meters high, built to harness the raw power of the Yangtze, and generate enough electricity to light up entire cities. But the cost was astounding. More than a hundred workers lost their lives during the grueling construction. The official price tag? Around 24 billion US dollars. Although, critics claim the true figure was far higher. Then it didn't stop with the monetary cost. The human toll as well was massive. Over one million people were displaced, and entire towns swallowed by rising waters. Compensation was promised, new homes, jobs, security. But corruption ran deep. For many, the help never came. By 2008, the Three Gorges Dam was fully operational, armed with 34 massive generators churning out an astonishing 22,500 megawatts, making it the largest hydroelectric power plant on Earth. However, this title won't last forever. China is already building the Yarlung Tsangpo Mega Dam in Tibet. This dam is proposed to generate three times more electricity, around 60,000 megawatts, but it won't be completed until the 2030s. Beyond the dam just being a source of electricity, it's a vital safeguard against nature's fury. One of its most critical roles is controlling the unpredictable flow of the Yangtze River. By managing water levels along its middle and lower reaches, the dam helps protect major cities like Wuhan and Nanjing from devastating floods. In moments of extreme rainfall, it becomes a barrier between rising waters and millions of lives downstream. However, nature has its way of showing who's really the boss. Rather than the stability once hoped for, China is facing a relentless assault of extreme weather. Torrential rains, sweeping floods, and brutal heat waves have become alarmingly frequent. Nowhere is the crisis more intense than in the Yangtze Basin. Relentless rainfall, the worst in decades, has pushed the Yangtze and its countless tributaries beyond their limits, spilling over banks and swallowing everything in their path. Entire communities are underwater, and the rivers show no signs of slowing. As the water surged, so did the fear that even the mighty Three Gorges Dam might soon be overwhelmed. Of course, Chinese authorities were quick to dismiss these concerns as merely propaganda. They've shown confidence that the dam was built to withstand even a once-in-a-millennium flood. 
It's capable of withstanding water levels up to 175 meters and designed to channel an astonishing 70,000 cubic meters per second. In their view, every warning is just an attempt to undermine their achievement, a way to cast doubt on what they consider a monumental success. Although officials assured the public there was no cause for concern, the steadily rising water levels hinted otherwise. Quietly, a race had begun, between the swelling floodwaters and the dam's ability to hold. If the past has taught us anything, it's that no structure, no matter how advanced, is immune to failure. In August 1975, one of the biggest engineering failures in human history happened. The Bangkiao Dam in Henan, once hailed as a marvel of engineering, gave way under the pressure of Typhoon Nina. A massive 600 million cubic meters of water exploded through the broken dam. In its wake, an estimated 85,600 to 240,000 people lost their lives. Now let's bring this terrifying scenario into the present. What if the Three Gorges Dam were to collapse today? It would be a true black swan event with the potential to become China's Chernobyl moment, not of radiation, but of unstoppable, merciless water. A massive tsunami-like wave would surge down the Yangtze River, consuming everything in its path. Cities, villages, farmland, major lakes and tributaries. Nothing would stand a chance. This would unleash a flood so massive it would defy comprehension. The human toll? Entire cities near the dam, each with populations between 4 to 6 million, would be ravaged in the initial onslaught. But the flood wouldn't stop there. It would barrel toward Nanjing, home to 9 million, and Wuhan, with over 11 million residents. In these dense urban centers, the loss of life could reach unprecedented levels, with little time for warning or evacuation. Then comes the next blow, China's food supply. The collapse would likely strike just before the autumn harvest, wiping out millions of acres of fertile farmland. What was meant to be a season of abundance could turn into one of hunger and desperation. In a country already facing food security concerns, the loss of such a critical harvest could push parts of the population toward famine-like conditions, while also sending shockwaves through the global food market. As the biggest hydroelectric power station in the world, the sudden collapse of the dam would throw large parts of China into a massive blackout. Without power, hospitals would shut down, factories would stop running, and transportation would come to a halt. Entire cities could be left in the dark, with no electricity, no way to communicate, and no way to move supplies or people. Daily life would be thrown into chaos almost instantly. But the catastrophe wouldn't stop at China's borders. The global ripple effects would be immediate and far-reaching. Disrupted supply chains would grind manufacturing to a halt. International trade would be shaken. Global food prices would soar as China scoured international markets to replace its lost crops, driving up demand and choking supply for the rest of the world. And then there's the geopolitical cost. In the aftermath, China would be forced to reroute vast foreign currency reserves toward rebuilding and relief. This would greatly impact the funds allocated for their major initiatives like the Belt and Road. Infrastructure projects across Asia, Africa and beyond would stall, leaving developing nations in limbo and further straining global economic stability. At the end of the day, nothing is more important than human life. If even a single person is at risk because of this massive structure, China has a duty to step in. It must ensure that the Three Gorges Dam doesn't become a constant source of fear. Rather, it's a structure that they can trust to keep them safe. But what are your thoughts about the Three Gorges Dam? If you love our story, please subscribe to be part of our community. As always, until the next one.